And I'm Jenny Lee, and we're going to be talking about soul ties. So ladies, have you ever been in a wrong relationship? Admit that it's wrong, but can't seem to move on. Have you ever tormented yourself by excessively having thoughts about a person, wondering about them, checking on them, stalking their social media, rehearsing conversations with them? Does your mind constantly replay an image of the past? Memories, rehearing previous conversations like a broken record. So, ladies, I know some of you may have questioned, well, what is a soul tie? Uh, a soul tie is a bond that you can't see, uh, things that will have you mentally and physically bonded. It occurs in both brains that has neurochemical changes uh, that encourage the limbotic emotional bonding. So these emotional ties are formed when people work together through daily problems, spend time together, they have life events, experience together. And what happens with these bonds is an electricity is created. So how strong these bonds are is determined by the amount of tension placed upon the bond through the different experiences that you have. Sometimes they're stressors, sometimes they're fun, but the moments that you spend together is how strong the, the tension of the tie becomes. So for example, in the beginning of an acquaintance or a relationship that you're building with somebody, it's often deflected, um, very accepting speech, a stage of the, of the bond building because you're just starting to get to know that person. Bonds are soft and pliable and then over time you become accustomed to one another's tension as the bond begins to form. There are different types of soul ties or emotional ties that happen with different people that you interact with on a daily basis. So the most basic one is wherever you work. Whether you go to school or you go to work, you're surrounded by people. So these people that you're growing with and experiencing with, you're growing a soul tie with them. In essence, you're growing an emotional bond. And they can be good and then they can be bad. Right, right. And some healthy ways to keep a bond um, at your workplace is to be positive, you know. Try to avoid anyone that's negative or anyone that may be new in your work workspace, try to help them out. Give them some tips and tools or some keys to be able to do their job smoothly. And as far as for uh, unhealthy relationships in the workplace as well, you know, you got to watch out for the ones that are like very negative, the ones that gossip, the ones that are just like picking and knacking all day long about the workplace, how it's boring, how... They don't want to do the job, you know, and then, or the lazy ones that, you know, expect you to do the job for them. Hey, can you do that for me? You know, because I don't feel like doing it, you know, types of those type of people and even trying to have a relationship. It doesn't, it's not really good because it just, then it just frustrates you. Then you're the one doing more of the job, the, the work and, and the job and just, you know, being by yourself and, you know, it can cause a lot of frustration in the workplace. Yeah, I agree. You are there working for a purpose, so why not just be happy, work together as a team, get um, the goal accomplished. At my job, we call it, do you have a best friend at work? So do you have somebody that you can confide in, that you can express um, your frustrations with, that doesn't gossip, but that can encourage you and uplift you and continue to getting done and accomplish what you need to get accomplished in the workplace? So another common soul tie that you make is with friendships. In friendships, typically you're friends with people who you have common interests with, you like to participate in activities with. So as you're spending time with these people, you are developing relationship with them. 
in friendship, there's good and bad, and there's friends that come at different times in your life that are there for that moment, and then you grow apart or you grow in a different direction, and that's okay. But during that time, you have an emotional bond with them. Right. You don't want to, as far as for healthy relationships with friends, you want to be with someone that's going to motivate you or someone that's going to bring value to your life. Uh, you don't want to be with people that's going to bring you down or talk negative or any type of negative vibes that can put you in situations and circumstances to get you in trouble. Yeah, um, where even if uh, where you have a friendship where she's pressuring you to do things, and, you know, you can get caught up in jail and, you know, doing things that you're not supposed to be doing. Yeah, and building a healthy, you know, soul tie with a friend is someone that you're going to be able to trust and be able to communicate with them in a good aspect. Because you don't want to tell your friends certain things and then, you know, always feel as though they're going to run back and tell someone else or they're talking behind your back. You don't want those type of negative uh, soul ties with your friends. Friends are important because you develop trust with them that when they need your help, you're there. And when you need their help, I'm here. And it's vice versa that works back and forth. Not only do you enjoy each other's company, but you can count on them in a time of need. When you ask somebody, why do, why is this person your best friend? I guarantee that it's rooted in, you know, they were there for me when I needed them the most. And that just emotionally speaks to the bond and how strong and pliable it is as well now something with friends that i want you to caution with is just to be careful with who you hang out with you ever hear the saying that says i'll tell you who you are but who you hang out with so the people who you surround yourself with you start to take on their personality just be careful that you are your own person and you are surrounding yourself and making bonds with positive influences Something else that we grow soul ties with and emotional bonds with is our family. So our family has the ability to influence influence us and we have uh, grown with them. We spend a lot of time with them. You're birthed into them. You wake up with them. You go to sleep with them. You talk about your days. You're experiencing a lot of time with them. Sometimes emotional soul ties with family are made just naturally and then sometimes you have to work at them. So there are healthy and unhealthy soul ties with your family. Yeah, you want to build those bonds with your family that's going to be able to uh, boost you up. You know, you want to and be in positive influences that, you know, maybe if you want to earn some money, you can ask a cousin if you can babysit or if you're not understanding something in school or in work and you want some positive advice you can go to your family in regards to that you just want to stay in a positive atmosphere with your family because sometimes family can give you um some negative impacts on things and that can create unhealthy soul ties yes i agree with that especially well, especially with the negative with the negative where you have family members that are judgmental they're you know they just talk about everything you do, that even if you're doing right or wrong, they're not supportive, and they just, you know, they just want to talk because they have nothing better to do. And then when you're trying to build these relationships with them, you don't know how to go about it because you don't know what to say because everything you say or do is like wrong and, you know, they see it as wrong. Yeah, soul ties with your family is important to have good ones. You always want the nurturing. As a, as a girl, I've always wanted the nurturing mom that I can just lay my head down and I always can guarantee that when I'm having a rough day, she's there to embrace me. Or the negative is what is, if you can think about what is the impact when a child is, is raised without a father or a son without their dad. Um, what is a negative impact of lacking that emotional bond and how it influences it? Soul ties and emotional bonds, they're formed by revealing your inner thoughts, feelings, desires, confining in your hopes, dreams, goals, disappointment, providing emotional support. The more you expose yourself to vulnerability, the more elastic this bond becomes. So ladies, let's talk about the most intimate bond that you will ever have. It's with your mate. Let's talk about what happens with an intimate partner. Now imagine this, a bond between a couple 
and they grow over time and they decide that they want to continue and be committed to each other so they test out the strength of their bond through having a dog. They see that they can manage having a dog together successfully, taking it out, training it, they're doing good grooming it, they move on to the next step and they see if they can conquer having a child together. Well, the stress of a dog is a little less than the stress of a child that cries in the middle of the night and you have to decide who wants to wake up to help this child or who wants to stay home so the other one can go to work or even go out with their friends. If you ever hear one of your girlfriends complaining about, I'm always stuck home with the kids. Oh, he never wakes up for the baby. Well, these are all stressors that test out the, the bond and the strength of the bond. So it's important that you are growing this and you're not fast forwarding it too fast because these stressors come. Now let's put even more stress on it. Let's say this baby has a medical need or a mental illness. The strength of the bond that you have together with your, your companion could be costly or deadly if it's really weak and it could leave the relationship. Statistics show that 80% of marriages end in divorce due to tension created in emotional bonds. So it's always good that these emotional um, ties that you're making with your companion is going to provide self-confidence in the relationship, self-belief in it, security, um, any problems that arise. You have this healthy emotional bond with your companion and the stress balances or imbalances it. So Jenny, tell me some good indicators of a healthy soul tie. Positive, loving, genuine, inspiring, nurturing, empowering, and trust are good relationships. So ladies, those are the key points that you want to stick to when having a healthy soul tie in a relationship. But let's not forget about unhealthy soul ties. Uh, unhealthy soul ties take place when people are misinformed and therefore convinced that sex is strictly single dimensional, physical act with no emotion or spiritual connection. That is wrong. You know, two may agree on sex just for fun, yet something occurs on another level that enhances emotional bonds between them, whether they want it or not. The human being has three parts made up of them. It's your spirit, soul, and your body. And the parts that make up the soul are your mind, will, and emotions. So your soul has five senses that's connected, which is your touch, taste, hearing, smell, and sight. Now, as women, we have trigger points. So the simplest thing a man can do to trigger one of our emotional connections or senses is smile at us or, you know, he may walk past smelling good, maybe even touch you a certain way, uh, like touch your hair by accident or brush up on you. And that awakens a certain desire within a woman that would eventually hit your soul. So when two people have sex, uh, for example, say I give you two pieces of wood and you glue them together and then the next day you try to rip them apart, you have connected from both of the woods, good, bad, and the ugly, and it stays with you. So imagine what happens when you have s several sexual partners. So Jenny, what are the indicators of an unhealthy soul tie? You feel confused. You're miserable. You feel anxious. You may be disgusted. You feel powerless. Um, tormented in the mind. No peace. Always thinking about the person 24-7. You can't be without this person. You don't know how to be without this person. No, you just, it just, it also affects your emotional state. And then not only that, it just messes with your heart and your mind. Right, right. So if you're still wondering if you're in a type in a relationship that's unhealthy, uh, some examples I can give you uh, that shows you're in an unhealthy relationship would be if you're, you know, physically, emotionally or spiritually being abused in a relationship, but you feel so attached to them and you're refusing to cut them off uh, the connection or set boundaries with them. You're probably in an unhealthy soul tie relationship, you know. 
if you've left your partner and you're still thinking about them and it's been years that y'all haven't been together or you're obsessively still thinking about them or, you know, just can't get them out your head, it's probably an unhealthy soul tie. Uh, when you take on the negative trait of a past person that you've been with um, into a new relationship and you you know, told yourself that this is what bothered me when I was in that relationship. And then you realize that you're doing the same thing with your new partner that bothered you with your old partner. You're more than likely in an unhealthy soul tie relationship. Yeah, be careful not to carry your baggage onto the next. Um, and, and a healthy soul tie that you might be in is if you defend your right to be with that person, even when common sense tells you it's a bad idea. Um, you stay in a relationship with the person when your people who love you um, have told you to run the opposite direction. When you stay in a relationship that is negatively affecting other relationships or maybe even destroying the most important relationships in your life. Hey ladies, listen. I was listening to a sermon by Dr. Juanita Bynan. Uh, on her sermon, she speaks about that every man you sleep with they become your husband. Um, the sermon is called No More Sheets and you can find her on YouTube. So ladies, what does this all boil down to? I believe, you know, having several sexual, part sexual partners boils down to valuing yourself. You know, would you do the things that you do if you valued, valued yourself? A person with no purpose has already lost, but a person with a purpose, you set standards for yourself and sex isn't just sex. You know, you value what you have. For example, if you had something valuable like an iPhone or a laptop, would you leave it outside for someone to steal it? No. You will take pride in the things that you have. So why not take pride in being a woman? You know, wear your crown. Have confidence in yourself. You do not want to just throw everything away just to have some type of fun or, you know, be with a guy because you're not valuing yourself and you don't know who you are as a person. Don't settle. Don't settle because you have something missing on the inside of you. Because what you'll do is you'll just go around searching for it. And maybe that's perhaps why ladies have a lot of partners is because they don't know their purpose. So they're searching for their purpose and having it being fulfilled in somebody else. And basically what you're doing is just entangling yourself with these emotional bonds. Um, set a standard. Don't drop below that. You are a queen. You are beautiful. You are worth it. Don't just have it meet a physical need. You want to make sure that the level of emotion matches the level of commitment. The level of intimacy matches what's happening physically. You don't want to jump too fast in. And don't go crazy either. When you find yourself on the borderline of crazy, ring yourself back. Right, right. Don't go stalking someone's Facebook. Don't go to your friend's house trying to sign into their account to see what they're doing, to see whose Instagram they're liking. Don't do all that, you know. Remember who you are as a woman, you know. Take pride in being a woman and don't, don't do the insanity of stalking a man that's not worth it. Yeah, don't um, try and make a fake social media account just to look to see what they're doing. <laughs> Stay off of Snapchat and their story. Don't drive by their house to see if their car is parked outside or even randomly show up at their place of work. Like, chill. If you are done in a relationship, pack it up. Put it in a box and burn it. Delete your text messages. Delete the friendships and just move on. You're better than that. There's a reason stuff then it work out and just unbind yourself take that step you know don't dwell on the past take that step um ladies also don't call his brother his sister his mama don't even go over there because there's no need to just you know if you still have a certain relationship with these people but keep it at a boundary because this is for yourself that you need to move forward and move on wear that crown high ladies very high and have hope you can never fall so far 
that you cannot be restored. Okay, ladies, how to break a soul tie. Number one, acknowledge the tie is unhealthy. Number two, confess and repent. Number three, forgive yourself and the other person. Number four, break and remove. Name the person's name and release them. So, and then also, ladies, I have a quote from Kurt Franklin. Soul ties, the thing that can make you hear an old school slow jam and think of somebody you haven't seen in years. Soul tie, that, the thing that makes old people who've been together for years finish each other's sentences. Don't you wish mama had told you when you were young, when you lie with someone you, you lie not just with her body, but with her soul. And whatever condition the other person's soul is in, you are guaranteed to take a piece with you, whether you want to or not. Instead of being amazed at her body, you should have focused on her mind. Great, great. Ladies, I hope you enjoyed today's episode in regards to soul ties. Remember, we have healthy and unhealthy relationships with friends, family, co-workers, and spouses. Uh, I also will include in the link how to break a soul tie. And thank you again so much for tuning in. You can find us on Facebook, Uncommon Women, IG, and IG and Twitter, Uncommon Three Women. You can also find us on iTunes and please subscribe. And you can email us as well at uncommonwomenpodcast at gmail.com. Like, comment, and share. Give us your thoughts or if you have any topics, let us know. So ladies, stay uncommon.